hello everybody and uh, welcome to Passport Educational Travel uh, Lock-in Coronavirus uh, Emergency uh, Project. Uh, we are happy to um, be here with you and uh, I'm really happy that many of you found time to uh, come and join this presentation. Uh, let's start uh, and then we can uh, talk a little bit uh, uh, about uh, my uh, let me just do the technical things first and here we go and uh, it's the first time for me as well so uh, I hope you forgive the little uh, excitement about uh, the program. So uh, Venice, I would like to take you to Venice on a let's say virtual uh, uh, trip, virtual visit, uh, not only Venice, but the Lagoon of Venice. Uh, if you would, uh, we will arrive in Venice by crossing this uh, uh, bridge that you see here down below, um, then I would uh, greet you with, uh, in Italian, saying buongiorno e benvenuti a Venezia. Uh, welcome and uh, buongiorno, that is a good day, it's a greeting that we all uh, now in Italian and uh, welcome to Venice. Um, if uh, uh, I am, I'm, I'm not in Venice right now, I'm afraid, uh, but I'm home and I live in Berlin. Uh, that's the map of uh, uh, Europe uh, to give you an idea. Uh, Berlin is the capital city of Germany and I live here with my husband Matthias that is also a, a tour manager, tour director for Passport as well. And if I would drive from Berlin to Italy, crossing then here the Brenner Pass in Austria, getting then down, uh, passing by Verona and then going towards the east, I will arrive in this area and this is the area where Venice is located. If I would uh, drive, it will take me around 10 hours, uh, by plane is around two hours. And uh, uh, this is what we are going to do uh, after I explain you a little bit more in detail how the area where Venice is located looks like, then we will just fly um, and get uh, and land together in Venice. Uh, the Italian peninsula, quite famous and easy to recognize because of the form uh, of the shape that is looks like a boot. Uh, it's a peninsula, the north are the Alps, so the mountain, high mountains, and uh, um, the area where Venice is located, the northeast, is in a region that we call uh, Veneto. And Veneto has, the, let's say, the most important town in Veneto is Veneto in English Venice. Uh, it is on the coast. Uh, the coast, this coast side is the Adriatic Sea. All the area of the seaside around Italy is called Mediterranean Sea, what you see down below. But the uh, eastern part of this uh, sea is called Adriatic and Venice is uh, on a, a bay, on a large bay area, but specifically into a lagoon. And now we fly and uh, I explain you a little bit uh, about the Laguna of Venice. It's a, a, a short film that I did myself, so the quality is a little, it's not the best, but it gives you an idea. I took away the sound so that I can explain you what you see. If you follow my uh, little uh, mouse click, then you can see this long stripe. And this is the long stripe of one of the 62 natural islands that create all the lagoon of Venice. And this is called the Lido Island. The Lido Island, by the way, when we go with Passports Group, often we stay at the Lido Island because it's a wonderful resort area um, that face from one side, the open Adriatic Sea. So this would be the seaside. And on the other side, the lagoon. What you see here, where we are approaching is what we call Venice proper. This main island is called Giudecca Island. And this canal is a large canal. If you see all these waves, these are all boats, different size that are uh, using this major canal for transportation of uh, goods of people. And you see that the shape of Venice, it's really difficult to, to understand because it's just like a, well, a floating city. And what is interesting is that this was reachable only by boat till 
1846, when this long bridge was opened. This is a railway, the end, the railway station called Santa Lucia. And in the 1930s, then a road was built and then was used by cars. Before that time, Venice was on, only reachable by boat. And uh, this is the way that uh, uh, we would come when we come with groups and we come uh, either by plane and then we will do the transfer by boat directly coming out from the airport. You get on a boat and you just do your transfer and you reach then Venice proper. Or if we come um, from the mainland of northern Italy, then we will get the road down, just come down this area and then either get on a boat there or if we stay in Venice proper, then we can uh, go with uh, uh, public transportation, which are boats, of course, called Vaporetto, or we walk. Huh? It's a pedestrian area. Let's talk about the fragile ecosystem of the lagoon. The lagoon is uh, an enclosed area of uh, uh, a combination of uh, fresh water coming down from the Alps. So here you see the small little Italy map, the north are the Alps, the mountain, and uh, the, uh, uh, the uh, different river, for example, the um, river Brenta comes down and get inside of the lagoon. And uh, on the other hand, you have the Adriatic Sea that by tides, high tide and low tides, pushes uh, daily and the tides are every six hours, pushes in and out salty water from the, from the sea. The surface of the lagoon is around uh, 213 square miles. There are a total of 62 natural islands on this uh, lagoon and uh, uh, is a shallow lagoon around 34 feet deep uh, is the, 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 the average depth and 8% uh, are, as I said, natural island. Um, what we see here in the middle is what we call Venice proper. Venice proper, uh, with the, that is where we have the major uh, and most important uh, historical sites. And at the mainland, we have one area that I would talk about in a moment called Porto Marghera. Porto means harbor, and Marghera is the name of the place. Um, the lagoon itself has three openings to the sea. You see then here Chioggia Inlet, Malamocco Inlet, and Lido Inlet. The Lido Island is this long stripe that I showed you when we were landing then on uh, two seconds ago. So here we talk a moment about uh, how difficult it is to preserve such a delicate ecosystem where uh, you have tides, you have uh, um, birds, different species uh, migrating and stopping in this lagoon. You have uh, um, um, small fishermen uh, companies that are still trying to keep alive the uh, man-made uh, not industrialized uh, fishing style you have clams harvesting and so this is the ecosystem of the nature that you have here then you have the city the tourism magnet the world heritage site with uh, uh, as you can see here different big cruise ships that are docking just directly into the um, area uh, of Venice proper islands and then you have this huge big industrial hub that uh, was a troublemaker it still is um, the idea was born uh, at uh, the end of World War One. 1917, the first development to try to make uh, an industrialized uh, hub um, close by this region were done. And uh, by the 1930s, then uh, chemical plants and uh, oil refineries uh, started to open in this area. Uh, remember, Italy doesn't have any oil uh, uh, reserves uh, so we always have to import oil and um, so from uh, uh, arriving to the 1960s then uh, the big development happened and all this area here was supplied by uh, uh, big uh, tankers that had to come uh, to the refineries so this artificial canal was built uh, digged 40 feet into the lagoon 
uh, so uh, underground, and this created a big problem for the ecosystem uh, and environment you can imagine. So therefore, we now have to combine all these three uh, aspects, the nature, the nature, the World Heritage Site and the industry. And uh, in our modern time, we are getting to have a little bit of trouble. But why people decided to settle down on, an, on islands in a lagoon? This is quite uh, strange. And we have to go back to the time where, when the Western Roman Empire um, was uh, uh, imploding and the different uh, uh, barbarian uh, tribes started to uh, take control of different territories of the uh, formal Western Roman Empire. And by the fifth century, different tribes started to come uh, and uh, met, maybe you uh, ever heard about Hatila the Hun. And they usually came for raids. So people were terrified, the locals were terrified that they were looking for a place where to just go away. And uh, afterwards with, the, uh, with tribes called the Longbards or Longobards around the beginning of the 500s, then they came to stay. But in all this period, people started from the mainland, so from this area here, to go to the nearby lagoon where there were some natural islands already used for uh, farming, fishing, or for production of salt, and decided to settle down there. The trade of salt, that was the only way to preserve food at the time, so it was like, like the white gold became so important and that the economy was flourishing and so they needed to build new land uh, to to reclaim land in order to have uh, um, mere, more people uh, living on the islands and how they did it they did it by creating artificial islands by using piles of wood that they would be stuck into the uh, the layer of mud and clay of the uh, underground of the lagoon, adding then some uh, wooden raft, putting some limestone foundation on it, bricks, there you go. You had in the base to have an artificial island uh, protected by the tides of the lagoon and uh, you could uh, settle down and live on it. No fresh water unless you would go by boat to the mainland to get some. So they needed to collect water. Without fresh water, you can live nowhere. And so they were creating in the underground as well by while they were building up this uh, artificial island, some water system to collect rainwater through this drainage uh, being then filtered with uh, gravel and sand and then with a central well. But uh, I have a short little video I would like to show you about uh, how uh, Venice looks below the uh, surface. Venice's bridges are more than pedestrian walkways. Hidden inside the Rialto Bridge is a remarkable example of the secret engineering behind this aquatic city. The bridge has a double purpose. It also carries power cables, drinking water, and gas pipes. Propping the bridge up, hidden under the stone and timber, is a forest of more than 12,000 ancient tree trunks. They burrow 10 feet down into the layer of firm clay. The 400-year-old posts support more than 10,000 tons of weight. Wooden posts like these are found all over the city. Venice's buildings stand on more than 10 million tree trunks that were harvested on the mainland hundreds of years ago. A vast forest submerged in waterlogged ground keeps the structures from sinking into the mud. Well, these beautiful buildings and architecture is actually founded on wooden poles. One might wonder why the wood doesn't grow. And the reason is 
because these poles are actually sitting inside the underground mud, which protects them. Hidden in the mud, away from oxygen, the piles are safe from decay. So, so I think this is a quite interesting uh, video. Uh, and uh, by the way, it's called Strip the City and it's about different cities. You can just go online on YouTube. You can find different uh, uh, videos, uh, how uh, big cities look like uh, underneath what we see. And uh, uh, this is a map of uh, Venice, what we call Venice proper. And uh, it's an incredible shape. It almost looked like a fish to me. Uh, 118 islands, some of them natural, some of them man-made, uh, as I explained, you create this uh, incredible maze. Uh, it's, uh, in Venice, one of the best things you can do is to get lost, because then you really discover the beauty of the, of the place. And you have more than 480 bridges, uh, 170 canals. The most famous is the Grand Canal, Canal Grande that is small, but so it's almost like a snake shape and comes to the most important area that is San Marco. But the one that we saw before when we flew into the town, the large one is the Giudecca Canal where you have the major transportation. Uh, the city has 55,000 inhabitants on, on, on these different islands. It's not easy to live in Venice. Everything has to be done on walking. You can imagine grocery shopping or taking your kids around uh, with a trolley is difficult. Um, there is a university that has, uh, uh, is very famous in Italy. Uh, it's called Ca Foscari. Uh, different faculties at the university, 20,000 students. So out of 55,000 inhabitants, 20,000 students. And, uh, and then tourists that come on a regular uh, base. Uh, and I will talk about it in a moment. There is a phenomenon uh, that uh, creates the or makes the life in Venice even on and off more difficult. That is high tide uh, by, by, by aqua alta, sorry, high water aqua alta, high water. It's a phenomenon that happens uh, normally um, autumn or winter, uh, but it's increasing because of climate change and different um, factors. Uh, it happens that the uh, water that is into the uh, lagoon cannot go back uh, to the open sea because of a combination of three factors that is uh, the um, position the distance between the moon and the earth uh, with the tides, then the intensity of two different kinds of wind. Uh, frequent is the Shiroko, uh, a, a warm south wind, or the Bora, that it's a strong cold wind that comes from the northeast, and the atmospheric pressure. And with these factors, as you can see here, the uh, lowest part of town, which is San Mark Square with San Mark Basilica here, flooded. And also here, people are just enjoying and having lunch, uh, waiting yeah, for the tide to go back. So this is getting more often. You might have heard about there was a uh, November 2019, a big uh, high tide. Uh, what happened then in this fragile ecosystem that I'm try, I tried to present to you, that we do love to go to Venice. And of course, we are not alone. Um, we are among 30 million visitors a year. The problem is that many of them uh, do not even stay overnight. So they come really into town around 60,000 people. So uh, more than the uh, inhabitants of the town come into town. Uh, and uh, in the last 10 years, uh, mega cruise ships are entering the fragile ecosystem of the lagoon. And uh, uh, the guests that normally travel uh, with cruises just come to visit a short visit of the town and just uh, immediately leave. So it's a big number of people that share a very small space. And this uh, is creating, uh, as you can imagine, uh, a, a, a really a very crowded uh, situation. Like here you see a, a big uh, parking lot for the famous gondola that is the traditional uh, 
a banana shaped boat of Venice, 1000 years old. It was always used for the transportation. But you have then all the ecosystem that still tries to survive, and you have different projects that are done uh, trying to protect the uh, islands from erosions. And uh, this is uh, the task that we all have to do by trying to hope for the future. Also, with now this incredible stop due to the coronavirus, the city of Venice is experiences, experiencing uh, for the first time uh, uh, so less uh, a movement inside of the lagoon. If you see this picture that has been taken by the NASA uh, space station in 2017, you see that, uh, uh, and you can imagine now that no boats are going around rather than the small ones to deliver uh, things that the people need for Venice, but there are no touristic boats, there is not that much movement, and the lagoon is starting to just breathe again and our goal is to try to try to find a sustainable um, combination between the protection of this environment uh, um, the historical city uh, that we want to preserve for future generation and as tourists that by traveling responsibly and uh, uh, what we do for example with passport we go to venice and we stay in venice we uh, use their restaurants we use their small hotels we we use the uh, small boats company that take us around. We walk everywhere. So uh, we try really to be respectful for the area and for the environment and everyone can do his part. So I think that uh, uh, it's uh, still a wonderful place to go and uh, I can't wait to go with you there back again. So I thank you everybody for your attention and uh, I would like then to um, now finish my presentation and uh, to get some feedbacks and also some questions. Thank you very much.